Let's now review the chapter as we've talked about electric potential and we're going to have a broad topic of electrostatic potential energy. We're going to put everything together here. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that a lot of the charge distributions that we looked at were some form where it was a symmetric shape. Uh, you're looking for a potential on a point out here on the a line or something where everything is symmetrical. And we came up with ways of being able to solve these. But when we talk about the broad subject of potential, there's two things we need to remember. And one is the conservation of charge. And the conservation of charge is that we cannot make or destroy charge. And we also have the conservation of energy. which says that we cannot make or destroy energy. These two concepts, it can be shown that when these two are true, then the system is linear and we can have the use of superposition. So what that means is that instead of having to have everything symmetric, we can have a system where we may have different charges. We'll call this Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and you may have some point in space where you want to find the potential. And so each of these charges, because of superposition, can be looked at individually based on its charge magnitude and the distance from the point that we're interested in. We look at each contribution independently. So this leads to a formula for our potential, which is the potential is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then it's just the sum of the ratios of the charge to the distance. Here it'd be Q1 over R1 plus Q2 over R2 plus Q3 over R3 plus Q4 over R4. And we can continue with however, with however many charges we have. And we can simplify this formula down. to a summation, n equals 1 to m of q to the n over r to the n. Now, m can go to infinity. There is no restriction on that, if we want. But m can also be just a uh, definite number of these individual charges. Now, when you have a summation like this, and if you have a charge distribution, and you take uh, the charges as being over a length, you can see how this can become an integral. And then you're going to have this R function related to where the Q's are in the in space. So 
there's a point at which we can make a very general form of this formula, but a lot of times we have to come up with the integral, take it from a summation to an integral to be able to find the potential at some point in space. And we have a problem like that in the homework where we're going to, to, uh, to uh, actually work with this. Now one unit that uh, is used quite a bit is the electron volt. So a one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. And this is the equivalent of one standard charge moving through one volt potential. And typically it's used for subatomic particles. in atoms. They're very, very small. And that's because the mass is so small, the amount of energy is small, it's easier to work with electron volts, it's just a bigger a number, don't have to do so much with the exponents. And you're going to find this, not in this class, I just bring it up as a note, but uh, this is very useful in quantum mechanics. So if you are planning to do more in uh, physics, getting into the more difficult classes later on, uh, quantum mechanics you'll use this electron volt unit quite a bit. So this finishes up the chapter uh, for electrical potential and now we'll move into chapter 24 uh, talking about capacitors.